Hi, I am Gargi Chakravarti. I am from NLU Jodhpur. I am assistant professor there. Now, I am going to deal with module 18, International Cyber Law, other comparative jurisdiction. Already module 16 and 17 talked about the cyber crimes related with UK and US, their legislative measures to combat the cyber crimes. Cyber crime is not different uh, from country to country, it is a very unique in nature, so it is a very universal in nature as well. So, cyber world is a no border place. So, cyberspace is the place uh, of the digital world which is full of freedom uh, and each and every one throughout the whole world can uh, come on one particular place. So, the threat is also same the crime is also same, combating the situation is also same, new new challenges are also same. Now, in this particular module, there are certain repetition of uh, module 16 and 17, those are related with cyber crimes, the terminology specifically, which I am not going to uh, repeat vastly. Uh, anyone can cross reference with uh, module 16 and 17 and altogether module 16, 17 and 18 is a very comprehensive way to know the whole world, how the cyber crime is going on and how uh, each and every country, specifically the prominent country like US, uh, UK and other country, other prominent country like Australia, Germany, New Zealand, even India uh, with the technological advancement, how they are facing the challenge, how they are combating the situation. So, starting with that, uh, it gives uncountable opening at the same time, it comes with numerous vulnerabilities as well. New countries and people are getting chance to access the new technologies, which makes life easier, simpler, but over dependency of the cyberspace makes people more vulnerable and susceptible. Cyber crime is evolving extraordinary space like stalking, hacking, phishing, wishing, spoofing, cyber squatting, cross siting, scripting, data theft, DOS, DDoS, zero row exploits. So, some new technology I am introducing in this particular module. So, uh, I will give a extensive explanation on that and some of them is a repetition. I am just in short uh, stating, you can cross reference with the previous module. Cyber crime is a common term used for describing all criminal activities using computer, computer system or internet network. With the advancement of computing, telecommunication, a life of human being is renovated drastically. But all opportunities are usually followed by criminal intervention and computer revolution was not an exception. All pathways of convenience were exploited by cyber criminals for wrongdoing. So, electronic services in banking, finance sector, uh, e-commerce, online shopping, um, tele telecommunication, internet banking, everything is somehow affected by this cyber crime uh, related to the financial crime. Now, electronic communications like email, SMS, MMS, uh, social networking sites uh, are also in a threat in a similar manner. So, the we know the cost of stalking, cost of harassment, which is lead to a very problematic zone as I have said earlier even it can uh, indulge suicide, it can indulge psychological disorder. So, it is a societal problem as well now. So, what is the definition of the cyber crime? We need to define the cyber crime. So, globally can understood which is coming under the word cyber crime. Now, UN convention on cyber crime defines cyber crime as the production, obtaining procession, possession, sale or otherwise making available for another computer programs and data especially suitable as a tool for criminal conducts in a computer system or network when committed intentionally. Now, Indian Information Technology Amendment Act 2008 define <coughs> the term cyber security, which says it means protection of information equipment, devices, computer, computer resources, communication device and information stored therein from unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification or destruction. There is a need of classification even for the cyber crime. 
to understand the nature of crime it can be divided broadly into three categories now crime in which computer and computer network is the target of the crime like hacking malware attack virus attack dos attack now traditional crimes which is renovated with the help of computer by using the computer as a tool like pornography child pornography stalking copyright infringement in internet fraud now traditional crime in which computer is related incidentally first two types are actually included in the category of cyber crime but this form of classification is used in us australia canada uk and international level so this is a broadly the classifications of the cyber crime now some examples though i have uh, in detail explained already examples let's see some more examples cyber stalking we have talked twice already so i am not going into it uh, hacking we know hacking is a type of cyber crime in which criminal breaks into any other anyone's computer or computer system or get sensitive information illegally internet fraud identity theft financial crimes can be done by the hacking as per europe's criminal intelligence agency europol cyber criminals develop bugs or viruses for hacking two important bugs used for hacking are heartbleed and cell shock which attacked millions of computer and computer networks in different countries similarly several malicious software and malware is used to affect computer to get sensitive information which cost people's money or privacy one example of malware attack in europe happened in january 2014 by using exploit kit into computer system the said malware was used to attack yahoo users through the advertisement during 31st december and finally removed on 3rd january but by that time thousands of computer had been hacked across romania france and uk so they have collected enormous number of sensitive data and led to a vigorous type of cyber crimes through that mainly related with the financial crime now recent case of uh, hacking jp morgan chase and company's computer network had faced a severe type of cyber attack earlier this year the attack resulted in the data theft of millions of jp morgan customers volume of data theft was 76 million customer jp morgan is a very well known financial company and it is regulated with good lot of customers money so the customers worldwide are affected by this attack stolen information including names phone number email address it has been said that hackers were unable to get more sensitive information like account number password social security number or date of birth but they uh, managed to get some of the information which could be a uh, very threatening as well denial of service attack uh, i have already mentioned earlier uh, just giving one example that first dos attack has been done in the year 2000 in canada which attack was series of e-commerce sites like amazon.com and ebay.com as per the estimated of federal bureau of investigation those affected sites suffered a loss near about 1.7 billion dollar so we can understand the intensity of each and every cyber attack as i have said in the module 16 even the cyber attack is much more vigorous than the physical crime physical crime can affect one or some group of people but cyber is such a thing the chain reaction and uh, intensity is so vast it can affect a huge number of people several countries all together so the intensity is so higher that is why it's quite scary and there is a need of highly sophisticated infrastructure to combat with that now distributed denial of service also we have uh, talked about one example just i am citing here that distributed uh, denial of service attack uh, actually attack of trojan in europe through the internet service provider psi net uh, through one of their unprotected server connected computer and network got flooded with spam mails and hence all become inoperative now you are working in organization each and every day uh, your 
or whole day you are stuck with emails because good lot of important emails communication is needed you need to know uh, and it is related with your work. Now the spam bell which is just a junk uh, it is not needed at all in number of unrelated un uh, necessary mails are coming and you are just tired to delete of them. So, we usually get good lot of advertisement mails or unnecessary mails uh, even we do not know these people these are called the spam mail. So, in this manner they disrupt the smooth working environment and they harass people they annoy people in this manner this is the another uh, intention of the cyber crime. Now, Fishing, smishing and wishing we already talked about it is uh, related uh, with the financial crime actually through that uh, they actually hacked or they actually used to get uh, the details of the customer or details of one personal account and they utilized it uh, the bank account and they utilized it for the financial crime. And smishing and wishing is actually related with the mobile but it is a very much similar to the fishing. Uh, this type of crimes are popular in every countries including India also where misleading mails had been sent from ICICI banks email uh, ID or using VSNL emails. So, this type of things used to happen and they used to get the credit card or debit card details and they utilized it for the fraud. Now, cyber squatting. Cyber squatting is related with IP intellectual property and cyber. Cyber squad is, is the is to use some victim's name and to create a website using his name or cheating purpose. The website usually make promises of unwarranted profits and try to get unfair advantages over his com competitors in terms of revenue from the advertising. Now, the thing is like that we trust a website name we think it is it is uh, it is open for each and every one no one can deny the existence of that particular website so we we start starting on that site we rely on that site and we proceed with that particular site but the problem is it is nothing but a fraud they just taking a name a very reputed name and utilizing it maybe it will be vanished uh, within a week or within a couple of months or maybe within a day and before that they can do whatever they want and end of the day the loss of the public loss of the government or in any country even. So, they used to take the unfair advantage over the competitors in terms of revenue and the advertisement. WIPO arbitration and mediation center had handled some cyber quoting cases which are mostly related with trademark and domain names problems. Now, there are certain cases related with uh, cyber squatting just I am citing maybe who is uh, dealing with the trademark and uh, cyberspace interface they went into details or they are going to into details but I am just uh, mentioning some of them that facts virtual works INC registered the domain name vw.net in 1996. When they first registered the domain name virtual works through to offer to sell the domain name to Volkswagen if they are willing to pay a lot of money. But instead virtual works used the domain name for two years for the ISP business. In the year 1998 Volkswagen expressed an interest in purchasing the rights of VW.net. Virtual works told Volkswagen they could purchase the rights to VWNet, but it uh, if they did not within 24 hours paid they were going to sell the rights to the highest bidder. Volkswagen argued that virtual works registering the domain name was an act of cyber squatting under the ACPA because their primary purpose of the registering VWNet was to make a profit by selling it to the Volkswagen. Now, the legal issue did virtual works violate the anti cyber squatting consumer protection act when registering the domain name VWNet. The opinion of the court is that the virtual works violated the ACPA and 
acted in bad faith intend to profit when they registered the domain name vwnet when virtual works registered the domain name they knew about the famousness of the vw mark volkswagen mark which is very much reputed in the market the similar to the vwnet to the vw mark and the vwi org vwi net were both available domain names which can be very much confusing for the customers which can dilute the mind of the customers and the infringement happened and in this way they just override anyone else right there is a another problematic uh, zone is the cross site scripting cross site scripting is a common application based web attack xss usually target the script embedded in the user web browser page uh, xss is one of the internet security weakness of user side scripting like html or javascript which is designed by the cyber criminals to control web application of the user side and preferred by the malicious user during xss attack malicious contents were delivered to the end user by using html or javascript so i am using one particular web based service which service i am attending they send some script and through that script some malicious content is coming to the end user so criminal can access to that particular account's credential by using this type of script which is mainly based on html or javascript can spread web web worms can access browser history can control the browser from the remote location so we can understand the uh, vigorousness of that particular crime so they can do whatever they they want now basic format of typical xss attack the typical xss attack the hacker infect the web page with the malicious script when any user visit the web page the script gets downloaded to the victim's browser and malicious user in, inject a script in a legitimate site url which is turned redirects a user to some identical and fake page fake page will in turn uh, run a script to capture the cookies of the user browsing and shopping site now there is a debate sometimes we can see that whenever we are um, online we are doing the online shopping we are looking for any hotels we are looking for any uh, year tickets whenever we are surfing facebook or any other site side by side whatever i have searched they are showing this type of same advertisement but they have their own plea they are telling no we have no intention google used to do that and other um, uh, i mean e-commerce site used to do that they actually trying to say through this they are just trying to make easier our way for the search so we uh, i mean it's a fast server can locate those uh, things very easily so cookies is in one way helping the access but it is very dangerous which is helping the access that can be utilized so badly so it can uh, very dangerous for any any end user and he can be victimized by the huge loss so we can see diagrammatically the hacker infected script is coming victimized web page they have visit inject script is enter and illegal activities happened by the uh, cyber criminals now common criminals activities using xss identity theft accessing uh, accessing sensitive information to get free access for a paid content alteration of browser functionality public defamation of any individual or corporation denial of service act attacks financial crimes web application defacement etc now <clears throat> there is another one zero day exploits zero day vulnerabilities are threats to the organization or companies these are signature based threats which exploit an unknown vulnerability in the computer operating system attackers use to find the vulnerability before the developers do and before developer can address the vulnerability to create a patch the attack happens as a developer has had no time to fix the vulnerability by providing a patch hence the name zero day exploit is given several vectors are used for this kind of attack one example of the zero day threat is a uh, aura attack on google in 2010 which was 
identified later uh, on the Mac Cafe Labs as zero day vulnerability in Microsoft Internet Explorer. So, I have told earlier also, it is a one problematic zone, Someti sometimes uh, the crime happened and later on, I mean uh, later on they realize what actually happened. So, always the rule breakers are one step ahead of the rule maker. Now, diagram wise we can say there is an innocent user, there is a compromised site and malicious Java file and malware. So, in this way they infect and one vulnerability flow used to happen. So, special challenges related to the cyber crime, easy vulnerability. According to the data of 2009, about 1.6 billion people use internet worldwide which is about a quarter of the total population. This huge number of population on internet gives the criminals to attack all of them at a time through a process of unautomated transmission. Day by day the telecommunication technology is getting easier to use, our life is very much comfortable and easier. Obviously, at the same time it is became easier to the offender as well. Internet also provides the chances of doing the offense. Um, through the proxy server, spoofed email, spoofed IP address, when the communication through modern day networks takes data through a number of jurisdictions and the data becomes time sensitive and difficult to trace back. Now, how to deal with the jurisdiction? Normally, from law point of view, we consider the place of residence of the um, defendant or the place of cause of action. Sometimes it is very difficult to locate the cause of action place. So, minimum contact theory now good lot of country applied even India also ac accept the minimum contact theory. Wherever the minimum connection with that place is there we can consider as a jurisdiction of that place to handle the situation. Otherwise with that debate what will be the jurisdiction, what will be the jurisdiction we cannot reach one point to decide the jurisdiction and we cannot uh, combat with the situation and we cannot uh, have the legal, uh, r uh, legal solution for that difficult situation. So, there is a need or there is a need of a special emphasis or special understanding which is not really uh, similar to the physical crime. So, there is a need of special understanding for that uh, reason. Now, um, a single transaction over internet may involve uh, at least three jurisdiction as I have said earlier the range of extraterritoriality in such national laws usually vary and how they are doing. So, understanding of one country is something else, understanding of other country is something else. Suppose the obscenity, obscenity definition UK is uh, thinking about something, US is thinking about something and India is thinking about something, how to deal with that particular thing. So, there is no uniform international jurisdiction law even available now. So, there is a need of a consensus or thinking rationally to sit together all the thing UN convention on cyber crime can do it better. This is just a recommendation or suggestion to resolve the issue related with the jurisdiction because jurisdiction is a is the most important thing to decide to combat with the cyber crimes. Now, international, regional and state response for the cyber crime. UN cyberspace treaty we have Repeated and coordinated cyberspace attack are seen worldwide on sensitive information and critical infrastructure. United Nations response has come against um, it as UN cyberspace treaty. The initiative started when the draft code of crime against peace and security of mankind has been adopted by International Law Commission in its uh, 48th session in 1992 and submitted to the UN General Assembly. International Telecommunication Union launched the Global Cybercrime Agenda in May 2007 and in October 2007 a global high level expert group formulated had been made to reinforce that International Telecommunication Union's effort to combat or to uh, regulate the cyberspace. The global strategy um, prepared into the August 2008 uh, the 
five key areas they have identified legal measures, technical and procedural measures, organizational structure, capacity building and international cooperation. Five important points they have covered, literally these are the key areas every country need to consider. So, uh, it, it can formulate the global protocol on cyber security and to combat with the cyber crime and which is presented in the internet uh, governance forum in November 2009 and discussed thoroughly in the 12th United Nations Congress on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice in Salvador, Brazil on April 2010. But unfortunately, the proposal was rejected by the UN as number of developing countries including China, Russia did not able to reach an agreement with this matter with group of development countries like, like US, UK, Canada and EU. The reason shown why developed country group was in situation of Budapest Convention on Cybercrime in place since 2001 and ratified by 46 countries as well. Now, the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, we need to know what is that. Budapest Convention on Cybercrime was the first international treaty addressing computer related criminal activities, want to harmonize the national laws to improve. As I have said several times, it is not a problem of one particular jurisdiction, it is not a problem of one country. Different countries altogether are related with that. So, there is a need of a consensus to handle the thing collectively. There is a need of good understanding, extraterritoriality uh, to combat the situation. Uh, there is a need of a vigorous cooperation between different uh, nations. The convention was adopted by committee of ministers of the Council of Europe in November 2001 at the uh, 109 sessions and opened for a signature. Finally, the convention entered into the force 1st July 2004. 42 European countries had become signatories of the convention along with non-members countries like Canada. Now, we need to come to the India, what is the position of India? We have Information Technology Act, till now we do not have uh, a series of uh, legislation like US or UK to combat the cyber crimes, but it is quite well structured uh, legislation, though there is some um, not interfaces, actually we have the reference of IPC, Indian Penal Code and Evidence Act also we need to consider sometime uh, some banking law is also related with that because some interfaces are there we need to have that cross reference to deal with the cyber crime. We already know the vastness of the cyber crime, so we can well understand why this cross referencing is needed. Now, Cyber Technology Act was passed in in India in 2000, it deals with matters related with electronic communication and cyber crime and it is amended again in 2008 which enhance the punishment further like provisions of life imprisonment and fine up to rupees 10 lakhs for certain classes of cyber crimes, uh, cyber crime. Certain specific cyber crimes enumerated in this act is given in following slide. Tampering with computer source code uh, used for computer and computer program, computer system or network this is punishable with imprisonment of 3 years and with fine or up to 2 lakhs rupees fine or both. Hacking of computer system, this act is punishable with imprisonment for 3 years or with fine up to 5 lakhs or both. Now, one is the just a circumvention, there is no wrongful intention, they just circumvent due to uh, security check or just a curiosity, it is just uh, considered as a uh, wrong, wrongdoing, not a criminal thing. Cheating by personation using computer, computer resources or other communication device, this act is punishable with imprisonment for 3 years or with fine up to 1 lakh or both. Capturing, transmitting or publishing private parts of any human being without consent, this act is punishable with imprisonment for 3 years or with fine up to 2 lakhs or both. We have covered cyber terrorism as well because cyber terrorism is a very important um, aspect of the cyber crime which is punishable with life imprisonment. So, capturing, transmitting or publishing something which is obscene in any electronic form, this act is punishable with imprisonment for 3 years. Um, for the first conviction and then it can be raised up to 7 years for the subsequent conviction.
capturing, transmitting or publishing something which is sexually explicit in electronic form, this act is punishable with imprisonment for 5 years. Uh, for the first conviction and subsequent conviction can be up to 7 years. Now, it is also covered the child pornography, the first one, first imprisonment for 5 years and 10 lakhs rupees for the first conviction, it can be raised up to 7 years or fine up to 10 lakhs for the subsequent conviction. Disclosure of, of information, I mean breach of contract or breach of confidentiality also uh, covered under this act, intentional fraudulent publication of digital signature or unlawful for the unlawful purpose is covered with that. Having any computer, computer systems, computer disk, floppies or any telecommunication devices also covered with that. All the said crime if done outside India or any foreign citizen shall be liable for the similar punishment if it involves a computer, computer system or computer network located in India. Here we are try to clear the jurisdiction issue. If the systems or the machines is in India, whatever may be, wherever may be the cause of action or person is doing, the residence of that uh, person is wherever they are accused for that, that is clear. Now, others countries response to the cyber crime we need to know. We are giving a, a special emphasis on uh, New Zealand which, uh, who adopted a cyber security strategy in 2011. Ministry of Economic uh, Development in, is responsible for implementation of cyber security policy and priority had been given to three core areas, protecting government system, coordinating coordinated response and increased awareness and capacity building is very important to know what can actually be happened, then we can take the uh, proper measure to handle the situation. New Zealand with other four countries, namely UK, Australia, US, Canada build up a strategic ally and cyber crime working group in 2006 for starting a harmonized activity in all this country. Government agencies are playing important role in implementation of cyber security strategy in England like National Cyber Security Center is made for protection of government information system, critical infrastructure, National Cyber Crime Center has been made, electronic crime, crime lab is established for performing cyber crime related forensic investigation. There is a need in case of India also, the, I mean we have cyber cell, good lot of cities now, cyber forensic is trying to develop, this is the another zone India is need to concentrate as well and India is developing day by day. There is a need of good lot of infrastructure and funding uh, to and uh, research and development as well to develop the forensic investigation related with cyber crime and capacity building. Because still we are somehow uh, try to relate the crime which is coming under the IPC Indian Penal Code and we try to execute it under the CRPC. But we need to know this is the new dimension. The 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 handling situation should be very much unique for the cyber crime it can be it cannot be covered like the other physical crime which is covered earlier legal system in new zealand enacted cyber crime amendment act 2003 which defined certain types of cyber crime example international dishonest access to the computer system damage or interface with a computer or computer system production sale distribution or possession of any software related with crime and illegal and unauthorized access to any computer system other countries uh, response we can continue with australia australia is having the cyber security strategy which is developed in 2009 and renovated in 2011 which includes cyber crime cyber safety cyber security safety of online customers and cyber defense australia has passed several pieces of legislation like uk and us to create cyber security legal framework like Cyber Crime Act 2001, Spam Act 2003, Surveillance Devices Act 2004. Under the existing strategy, the government has announced further legislation, Cyber Crime Legislation Amendment Bill 2011. Mainly, it is related with uh, the unlawful access through planned amendment to the Telecommunications Act also. Other countries response uh, we can have under that Germany, uh, a major threat of the cyber crime in Europe 
is adopted federal cyber security strategy in 2011. German government has given emphasis on certain strategic areas like critical information infrastructure, IT system security and public administration of IT security etc. National Cyber Response Center and National Cyber Coun uh, Security Council have made for implementation of actual crime control mechanism for cyberspace, coordinated action on cyber security in Europe and worldwide, use of dependable and responsible professionals, personal expansion in federal authorities, tools to respond to cyber attacks. German criminal code used to address the traditional crimes committed by or to the computers like India, they, we are trying to um, relate the IPC and uh, IT Information Act to co combat the, both the situation because till now we are comfortable, we are conversant with the IPC. So, in a similar way we can see that the German criminal code is trying the conventional or traditional crime which is related with computers, they try to relate with each other which is related with computer system, computer network, certain crimes included in the provisions are violations of privacy, data espionage, phishing, forgery, uh, criminal damage. Uh, in addition, it is worth mention that Germany was an original signatory of the Budapest Cybercrime Convention. It has originated in European Union and they are one of the founder member. So, this is the as a whole uh, we have uh, go through the cyber uh, crime in several other countries apart from UK and US and we have seen the position of India. Yes, we are in infant stage, we are just developing, our legislation is just a newborn baby, but we have done good development, it is developing already with the current situation because it is a day to day development according to the situation, India also going to deal with that. We are developing our forensic investigations related with cyber crime. We already uh, start awareness through the different centers, we, are, we start training um, for the different company, for, for different companies, even school level, colleges, even we are trying to develop. Uh, the awareness among the general public who are utilizing it now the mobile in it, each and everyone's hand good lot of people huge population of India is now surfing net through their mobile and internet is available even in the villages suburban areas. So, uh, police is now trying to well equipped with the situation. So, India is developing in each and every day. So, it is a, it's a growing stage, um, sometimes we criticize, but we need to give some time to develop ourselves. But we have seen the uh, how the other other countries apart from US and EU, they are handling the situation specifically Germany, New Zealand, Australia and other countries, how the different conventions is trying to harmonize the situations and how the treaties try to unite good lot of countries to combat. Uh, uh, the situation, there is a need of cooperation, there is a need of uh, uh, understanding uh, between good lot of countries because it is extraterritorial in nature, there is no border in the cyberspace. The unique problem needs a unique approach to handle the situation.